I was going on 13 years old the first time I took a life. It's just one day, I mean, got him, got invited to Mexico. He pulled out a handgun, told me to kill that person, the one kneeling in front of him. And uh, I just shot him. <sighs> you, you, you'll give a knife to a person in a situation like that and you'll be surprised at what a person can do with it. Rosalio Retta emerges as one of the most notorious figures in the Gulf Cartel's reign of terror. His life as a cartel man is marked by violence, criminality, and bloodshed. Starting his criminal career at the age of 13, Retta had made a name for himself in the drug enterprise. This is the harsh life of the youngest cartel member ever. Rosalio Retta, also known as Bart, was born on November 2, 1987, in Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas, Mexico. Retta grew up in a modest family with relatives on both sides of the United States-Mexico border, which makes them vulnerable to cartel's criminal activities. So as a kid, he was used to crossing the border between the two countries, and he does it with ease. Retta has knowledge of both worlds. So how did this kid manage to become affiliated with one of Mexico's most prominent crime cartels? Well, let's just say life at the border gets a little boring sometimes, and the young Rosalio Retta is a kid with a sense of adventure. At the age of 13, Rosalio Retta crossed into the Nuevo Laredo territory and kickstarted his criminal career from that moment. Rosalio Retta's close friend, Gabriel Cardona, who's also his future partner in crime, took him to a ranch to meet the infamous drug lord, Miguel Trevino Morales. Miguel Trevino, he was a monster, he was horrible. The stuff that he forced Rosalio to do, the stuff that he had to witness, should never have been forced on anybody. You might find the name Miguel Trevino Morales familiar. That's because he was one of the most feared and wanted drug lords in Mexico. Miguel Trevino, aka Z40, was a crime boss and leader of the infamous Los Zetas. He and his gang were known to be the most brutal and resentful criminal group in the country of Mexico. Trevino is a very important character in Rosalio Retta's life story, shaping how he became the renowned cartel member he is today. Surprisingly, Trevino Morales had a similar upbringing to Rosalio Retta, and maybe that sparked a connection between these two men. Trevino Morales, or Z40, was also raised in Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas, and along the Mexico and U.S. border. He began indulging in criminal activities and joined a local gang called the Los Tejas when he was a teenager. By the late 1990s, Trevino Morales' experience and fluency in English had him recruited by Osiel Cardenas Guillén, who headed the Gulf Cartel and Los Zetas. An important thing to remember is the Gulf Cartel and Los Zetas used to be one organization. There were many progressive issues and conflicts that led to their eventual split later down the road. Trevino Morales rose through the ranks rapidly. He was appointed the regional boss of Los Zetas in Nuevo Laredo in 2005. Around this time, the Gulf Cartel and the Sinaloa Cartel were engaged in intense turf wars, fighting over control of the drug trafficking routes to the United States. In 2006, Trevino Morales managed to secure the drug trafficking routes for the Gulf Cartel and was appointed as the leader of the Zetas. In 2008, Trevino Morales was promoted to the national commander of the Los Zetas after he wiped out the cartel's competitor in Guatemala. Trevino Morales had a strong path leading up to his criminal career. It seems like he had a great relationship with the Gulf Cartel, and the mutual connection between the two would last forever. Except Trevino Morales wasn't satisfied with his current rank anymore. His ambition grew with his experience, and eventually, he wanted to break free from the Gulf Cartel. Trevino Morales led the Los Zetas to declare their independence from the Gulf Cartel in 2010, and the two gangs begin engaging in wars with one another. Under his leadership, Los Zetas expanded and became an even more fearsome organization. Not that other cartels were any better, but the Los Zetas are known to utilize shock and awe tactics, which means they are not hesitant to torture, kill, or beat people. An extremely graphic but common torture method this gang used on their victims is called El Guiso, which means stew. This method required them to place their victims in oil barrels, dab them in gasoline, and burn them alive. This shows us that Los Zetas are willing to apply unlawful and inhumane methods against others, which makes them undeniably dangerous. He was one of the first persons I've seen to cut somebody's head off. He took his head off just shooting him. Just by shooting him. He shot him, he shot him more than 100, more than two, 300 rounds. And he was telling everybody, this is the way you kill somebody. I seen, I seen one time Miguel Trevino was torturing somebody, it was two brothers. And 
he made one brother kill the other one. He told them, look, one of you, only one of y'all is gonna live. So you have to kill him or you kill him. So decide. I already knew that he was gonna kill the both of them, but he just wanted to not, not talk to these people, not physically, but mentally. Mess him up in the head to where one of them had to kill one another. They had to decide who's gonna die, who's gonna get to go home. Though the gang is mostly involved in drug trafficking, they also operate through protection rackets, assassinations, extortion, kidnappings, and other illegal activities. So Los Zetas are operating for violence and brutality, and Trevino Morales ensured their reputation remained daunting to law enforcement and civilians. Mexican authorities believe that Trevino Morales and his gang were responsible for the murder of 72 immigrants in 2010 and the massacre of 193 people in 2011. Last week, you had the worst massacre in this entire drug war with 72 migrants killed by the Zetas, one of the drug cartels that, that operates primarily just below Laredo and Brownsville, Texas. They actually operate all over Mexico, but that's sort of their home base. Um, they're accused of, of gunning down 72 migrants. That's obviously the worst massacre that's occurred in, in what's a, an incredibly bloody drug war here. Luckily, this man was arrested on July 25, 2013 by the Mexican Marines, so he could no longer do any damage. Unfortunately, Trevino Morales had managed to wreck young Rosalio Reta's life before he was put away. Yes, imagine a 13-year-old boy being towered over by Trevino Morales, a merciless and cold-hearted cartel leader. It's a miracle he didn't kill Rosalio Reta at first sight, but he did damage him internally, forever. So Rosalio Reta and his friend Gabriel Cardona were brought before Trevino Morales. The cartel is known for recruiting vulnerable youth for their deadly operations, and Reta later said he was scared out of his skin upon their first meeting. He was a kid thrust into an unknown environment. The day Rosalio Reta crossed the Mexican border, he sought an adventure, but it soon turned into a life of condemnation. The first meeting between Reta and Trevino Morales was brief, but the crime boss took a liking to the young man almost immediately. He became close with Miguel Trevino. He became real close with the big boss. He trusted him. He gave um, Rosalio the big jobs. He was, he was proud of the work that he did. He basically took him underneath his wing and trained him to be just like him. It's like Trevino Morales saw the perfect mentee to mentor. Their first meeting ended in an irreversible way and a life was taken as a result of it. Reta later said in an interview that if he didn't kill the person, they would have definitely killed him. It was like a survival game, and Reta became a player way too early. I think they, they saw that, that scared, panicked look in my face and asked me if I had ever killed somebody. And uh, I said I had, knowing that I, I had never took nobody's life, so. He pulled out a handgun, told me to kill that person, the one kneeling in front of him. And uh, I just shot him. I had to do it. What other option do I have? If I don't do it, I know it's gonna happen to me. Yet that was all it took for Rosalia Retta to become a cartel member. It's like a primitive initiation, but the Los Zetas are known to do worse things. And this was only the beginning of a long and brutal journey. It was about two weeks after witnessing his first execution that Retta received a phone call from Trevino Morales' people, asking him to come back to work for them again. It was at this moment that he became a child soldier for the Los Zetas. Retta later said that the training with the cartel was not your typical training. It's almost all the same, but you don't practice with paper targets. It's a constant war zone. Mm -hmm. You practice with live targets. It's just the way it is. The people we were using as targets were rival cartel members. They used to be uh, 50, 60, sometimes over 100 people just like cattle for the house. The young man found himself shooting at live targets during practice. Retta was trained with handguns, assault rifles, and rocket launchers. Slowly but progressively, he became a highly skilled assassin. Retta claimed he did not enjoy the killings and bloodshed, but he was exceptionally skilled at handling a gun. I didn't enjoy it. But 
but um, I tried to be the best at what I was doing. However, according to an interrogation tape acquired by CNN, Retta was heard saying, I thought I was Superman. I loved doing it, killing that first person. They tried to take the gun away, but it was like taking candy from a kid. His love for killing came from the adrenaline that Trevino Morales and Los Zetos instilled in him. It made him feel powerful to take someone's life. Unbeknownst to the teen, someone could have easily taken his life, just as he had taken others. Due to his deadly talents, Retta quickly rose through the ranks. When he was just 17 years old, he was asked to be admitted along with 70 other young assassins to train at the Zetas camp, where they were taught various combat skills by Colombian mercenaries. After completing the training, Retta was recruited to become a cartel assassin. Retta's first job was to take down a corrupt Mexican cop who had severed ties with Los Zetas and joined alliances with one of their rival gangs, the Sinaloa Cartel. The completion of this assassination caught the attention of the U.S. and Mexican authorities, spelling trouble for the young hitman. Eventually, Retta became more and more immersed in this line of work. He made a decent living from the cartel. It is reported that Rosalio Retta and his friend, Gabriel Cardona, lived in fancy houses, drove expensive cars, and were paid $10,000 for each killing. As their lives escalated, their appearance changed as well. Retta began covering his face in tattoos, and Cardona had a set of eyes tattooed on his eyelids. As members of the cartel's hitmen, they carried out many brutal killings, organized kidnappings, and spread fear wherever they went. Their reputation for mercilessness elevated them to significant roles in the cartel, confirming their roles as strong enforcers of the criminal organization. I mean, I've, I've done the simple stuff that everybody starts doing. Um, teeth out, fingers up, slowly. However, the glory didn't last long. There are usually only two outcomes for drug cartel members. You either get killed in a massive shootout or get incarcerated by authorities. Luckily, Rosalio Retta only experienced the latter. Gabriel Cardona, Retta's best friend and partner in crime, quickly became the target of federal authorities. In 2006, Cardona was arrested at a safe house and taken into custody. Authorities reported that Cardona had killed 20 to 30 people. He pleaded guilty to some of the known murders and was sentenced to 80 years in prison. After the arrest of his best friend, Rosalia Retta went rogue from the cartel, fearing retaliation from rival gangs. The stress of constantly having to look over his shoulder must have worn him down because eventually he contacted the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency to surrender and testified against the Zetas. It is said that Rosalio Retta had committed at least 30 homicides. Authorities said he even tried to brag about humans to white tigers during an interrogation. In 2008, Retta was given a combined 70-year prison sentence in the United States and Mexico. The seriousness of his crimes, including many terrifying acts like murder and organized crime, made people consider a larger issue, how young and vulnerable people are recruited into dangerous drug groups. This prompted many to seek better ways to address this significant problem. For the most part, Retta seems remorseful about his past. He told CNN, I've come to regret everything I've done. I couldn't take it anymore. It was really hard for me. I wasn't living my life. Retta was one of the many kids and teens recruited into the dark underground operations of gangs and cartels. The Gulf Cartel and Los Zetas aren't the only crime organizations using American and Mexican children, turning them into child soldiers. Many families living near the U.S.-Mexico border live in fear of their children being recruited by these drug cartels. Rosalio Retta's life illustrates how powerful criminal groups can trap people, especially young ones who can be easily influenced. When he was caught, imprisoned, and began helping the police, it gave hope that these dangerous cartels can be stopped. If we don't put a stop to it, more young lives will be ensnared in this criminal cycle run by the cartels. Placing one or two drug lords or cartel members doesn't stop the entire operation, but it offers hope to communities and families that their efforts are not in vain. Hopefully someday the border between the U.S. and Mexico can become a peaceful place where the two nations meet without struggles or conflicts. What are your thoughts on Rosalio Retta? Do you think he's a notorious mob boss or a misguided teen? Do share your thoughts. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.